I felt that he abandoned me from a, a young age, you know. Um, in my early years, he was present, but he also used alcohol as a coping mechanism and he exposed me to a lot of unhealthy uh, behaviours. So I am here with another, let's say, sister in loss. Um, one of my dearest friends also. Welcome to my podcast. Hi, Hi Zipporah. So, I call you Zip. So, so, we are talking today about the loss of parents. And, you know, this week is significant for you because um, it was the anniversary of your dad's loss. And we were talking on the phone about the man he was. Tell me about your dad. Um, so, yeah, so on Tuesday was two years since my dad moved on um he was the rock of our family um and I think for me I am so privileged that I had a present fulfilling loving present dad mm. and I was always so proud and almost putting people's faces that I've got a full home and my mum and my dad are together my dad is present in my life he comes to my parents evenings and drops mm. me to uni like he was just there god-fearing man um I'm the eldest of four loved us to bits and was just always there um, and even similar to um, what Keisha said, um, in his funeral, people were singing his praises, like we had picket papers, I'm from Ghana, so people had problems coming to the country. Mm-hmm. He was the person that helped them get over the church, was fundamental in the church, he was an elder in the church. When he passed, like, it's like our world was broken, mm-hmm. to be honest. He played such a fundamental role. And you were really close to him. Ah, daddy's girl, to the yeah. core, always and forever. So that for you, did it come as a shock? So um, he was back and forth between here and Ghana for a while. And my mum planned to be with him. We were all set up. They gave us inheritance. They did really well setting us up. In terms of setting legacy for your children, they got that. Mm-hmm. All of us have our own properties because of them. So mum said, you guys are fine. You guys yeah. are doing okay. I'm going to go and be with my husband now. Mm-hmm. So she went end of 2018. The year finished. Had a lovely Christmas. January, went to the shop. They in a shop in Ghana. He was unpacking stuff in the shop. My mum said he just started falling down. Mm. My mum knows um, CPR, so she was doing CPR. And if anyone knows Ghana in the market, you can't walk past there, so let alone ambulance coming through. So mm. she got a car, drove him through, got to the hospital, and they're like, dead upon arrival. What? How? What, what do you mean? I just went to shop with him in the morning. Mm. He was fine, talking to me, busting joke, and you're telling me, yeah. He's not here. So that friend of mine, she was in Ghana at the time. This was early morning. So we found out on Saturday evening, afternoon. I even remember the day we found out. Yeah. Went to my house. My cousin found out, came to our house. And I was like, you're lying. Like, yeah. shut up. This is not true. My sister, who's just below me, was pregnant yeah. with my niece at the time. Um, so she found out when she was with child. And God is good. He's amazing. Like, he takes someone but brings someone else. So a week to the day, to the time... My niece was born. So she was born the 26th. So she'd be two on Tuesday. So he literally turned our morning to dancing. Yeah. Literally. And I think for me, my faith has increased from my dad's death. Like, I don't know how people get through it without believing in high power. Mine is God, um, the almighty. Um, so yeah, so that that brings chills in my spine just talking about it. And that's what you remember the most. The funeral is what you remember most when you remember the anniversary. Were you able to go to the funeral? Yeah. So, um, it so was... I've never been to a Ghanaian funeral. I can only tell you about our um, showcase <laughs> of a funeral in the Caribbean. What's a Ghanaian funeral like? I think like? it's similar to how you guys do. I've never been to a Caribbean funeral okay. either, other than the actual funeral, funeral part. So we have a one-week okay. celebration of their life, which I think is similar to the awake. Well, we have a one-week drinking session. Okay. <laughs> That's about it. That's so, all about celebration of the life. So when they die, the week after, everyone comes to the house to pay their respects. Okay. Um, it's quite hard because you have to keep saying how the person died. So mum had to keep repeating herself about, I went to the shop. and So for me, I was like, why do you want to say this thing 10,000 times with different people when it's going to evoke that emotion from you? Everyone comes to the house, you dress in black up to the funeral. Okay. Um, so my mum came to London that weekend. She planned to come back, my dad, in that time anyway. She used to go back to plan it. So he died in January. We had the funeral in May because mm. it just takes time to organise everything. And so we're in January? Year. Yeah, so she died in January and we had the funeral in May. So so what are you... Sorry, we're going to go back to the funeral day. 
for me, funeral is closure. And I mm. couldn't wait for that day. I can't, like, I even felt like I rushed it because mm. I needed that ending. I needed, I needed, even though I knew she left, she's gone, she's, she's gone. I needed that for me to be over. Mm. I'm, I'm ready, I'm done. Um, how is Zipporah in four months coping? I wasn't. Mm. I think for me, my siblings, I, they just are a godsend. Like, they're my best friends. Mm. So we came together and mm. bonded together and got through each other. So my brother went with my mom to Ghana to help with the funeral arrangements. And he, as the only boy, the youngest, he took the mantle of stepping up as a man of the house. Yeah. Like, I rate Master Kissy. Um, <laughs> he went with my mom, sorted everything out. And we were here behind doing everything else. So the T-shirts, the booklet. Dorcas was looking after a new child and we were trying to help her, support her with that. So he was in the fridge for all that time and for me that's not no, that's not weird my uncle was in the fridge almost for nine months jeez so I feel like sometimes sometimes we long it out so much that you don't get closure until it happens so this it's all pent up because you haven't seen Were I haven't you seen crying? him I cried a lot couldn't sleep mm-hmm. and because my last memory of him I went to Ghana in 2017 he was with busting Joel we went out to eat mm-hmm. he's a very like Cool, calm, and collected is my dad. Mm. Doesn't speak often, but when he does speak, you better listen. <laughs> um, always smiling. So the last time we saw him was very good memories. Mm. And I always, because he went back and forth so much, I wish I went more often or he came back here more often. So uh, other than seeing him, are there other things in your relationship that you regret? No, actually. We talk every weekend. Things that I feel like I want to let my dad know things about me that, probably a secret I told him about it so I feel like he knew me in my entirety like we had a really good relationship I'll talk to him more than my mum sometimes because he got me Mm -hmm. so I don't have no regrets whatsoever my dad like coulda woulda I should have done this if Mm -hmm. only he was here not at all and I'm proud and glad of that to be honest it's really important and so so right we'll go back to the day of the funeral or the, the funeral process yeah so we went to Ghana in May and in Ghanaian culture the eldest person has to be the body to get it ready. So my oldest cousin was like, you don't have to do it because you're the girl if you don't want. I said, no, nah, I can do it. It's not only boys that can do this job. Mm-hmm. So literally he was in our family home in like a tent and I watched him. Obviously, I didn't want to see him in his nakedness. I wanted him in, if he's alive in his nakedness, I didn't want to see that. But when he was decent enough, I stayed the whole time watching them get him ready. So, mm-hmm. and it's quite, uh, I'll just be free. It's quite graphic. So they put like, Cut on wall up his nose to make sure his nose is formed. And it's very much, mm, mm. you're like, this is my dad's body. You're mm-hmm. joking and jiving. They put makeup on. They cover up the greys. They, like, I held his hand. It's, I even went to the mortuary to collect my dad. Wow. So they, we all went together, all four of us. And they said, is this your dad? And was like, yeah, we can confirm. And what was It's a bit beautiful, late now though, no? No, because they don't want anyone taking someone next to Oh, body. okay. So we wanted to make sure we went. And then when I got saw him, he was smiling, lying there. Like, he just looked... At peace. Did he? he looked... I, I know my dad's in heaven. And there's yeah. no shadow of a doubt about that. And I think that's what gives me comfort knowing I'm going to yeah. see him one day. So yeah, he was smiling. He's wearing his nice suit, little tux. He was just lying there. And we had a, a, a casket, but I had a glass around it. Just because... We're not, superfic- we're not superstitious, but Africa is Africa. And I just want to protect my dad. I don't mm. want no one's hands or spirits or whatever so we (laughs) we put like a glass around him in a tent so if you went to go see him you couldn't touch him only the family could touch him um the funeral was hard um just because it's the last time you see him but I think my bit where I have not doubt but not closure is I didn't go to see him be buried because they chose a place that was so far away in a different area that we had to leave all the guests to go there and mum was she just didn't feel like it made sense. We wanted somewhere that was in a crowd, that was closer to the family home. But family dynamics, people feel like they have more say. Mm-hmm. So you just you'd be at peace with it. So I feel to this day, I didn't see the first shovel go on him. I don't. I didn't see where he got back. I know where he's buried, and we're doing his um, headstone at the moment. But I, until recently, I had some. Oh, I don't know where my dad is. I don't have closure because I didn't see him actually get buried. Mm-hmm. So I still grapple with that. If that serves me or not but well, it is what it is so just do with it I guess because as you say dad is with Jesus <laughs> yeah literally I believe I think heaven for me is closer now it's here and as sometimes I feel like I'm I do my dad which I, I'm sometimes careful because I actually want to go to heaven because of Jesus isn't it mm. that's why I should want to go to heaven <laughs> yeah. but I want to go to heaven and see my dad yeah. um, 
And if that's what makes, ignites my faith to be more on fire for God, understand that he's real, then for me, that's okay. So I was talking to Shakisha about relationships and as a woman, often your dad is supposed to be the first man you fall in love with, mm. really. And he's supposed to sh- sh- model how um, true love is, you know? And is true love broken mm. now that your dad is gone? Good question. My dad showed me what love is. My mum and my dad had a very beautiful relationship, very open, affectionate, loving relationship. So I know what love is through them. Even my friends and family are like, I want a relationship like your mum and dad. Do you know how dope that is for your friend to say that? Like, yeah. I want your mum and dad to have. And I'm like, yeah, I had that. <laughs> I grew yeah. up with that. So for me, because I've seen it and he showed it, he wasn't shy to show it, I don't think it's broken. But I'm upset that my man won't see my dad or won't see what my mum and dad have to do that for me. Yeah. You know that example that... And how are you, how are you going to do that? Because Keisha and I were talking about the legacy. How are you going to bring dad into now? I don't... I don't know. Like, I keep him alive by talking about him all the time. Mm-hmm. Like, I even say is... I don't really use past tense for my dad. Yeah. yeah, I just for me for him to be present and active, and for me he's alive. It's in a different form. Yeah. So I still like daddy is, daddy's so happy of us. He's so proud of us. So still using that narrative and using present tense. I do that. I don't know if it will go, and I'm happy. Do you think? Case. I mean, we've spoken now to two of you who have lost um, fathers. Do you think there is a difference between losing your father? No, not difference, but the impact. Do you think if a mother was lost? It would be different. Yeah. Yeah. Even though you were closer to your dad. But your mum was... She carried you for nine months. Yeah. Um, Like, I don't even like thinking about my mum in that context. Because when my dad first died, some people say, all these theories, oh, you know when your dad dies, not long your mum will go. Why would you tell me that when mm. I was my dad? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, are you okay? Yeah. But it was like, oh, the grief sometimes is much for them. You go, as the oldest, it's oldest, you have to make sure you look after her because if anything happens, what, is it? Is it me? Yeah. So I think... That thought alone, I don't even want to comprehend it. But my mum has become so much stronger. Her joy is infectious. Like, I can't be down around my mum because she will just be like, Daddy will want us to be happy. Mm-hmm. He wants us to be proud. He's proud of us. He's looking over us. And she puts voice notes and is always singing different songs and trying to encourage us. Her joy is so infectious. But I, I can't compare to someone that's lost their mum. That's the feeling that I, I want to pretend to understand how that feels like. I know that feels like for me to lose a dad that's present and active. But a mum... I'm never going to pretend and use them lip service words people use because I can't relate. Yeah. I mean, obviously I can Mm -hmm. because it is real to me and there is nothing. I can't actually, and I've lost both. Mm -hmm. And I think my story of my father is really different because my dad wasn't active. Mm -hmm. He wasn't present. Um, I didn't idolize him. I felt that he abandoned me from a a young age, you know, Um, my early years he was present but he also used alcohol as a coping mechanism and he exposed me to a lot of unhealthy uh behaviors so I a lot of my memories were seeing my dad on the floor drunk you know and so he chose that life and I feel that he didn't prioritize me or my mum or our happiness because he um chose alcohol his alcohol left uh, um caused him to become blind um, my dad was blind 10 years before he died because he refused to stop drinking and he got a glaucoma and a cataract and you get you, you become blind if you drink when you've got diabetes. Um, and so my dad still, you know, carried on with his best life. Um, my dad was an adulterer. My dad actively cheated on my mum. Um, I was I was witness to women that my dad cheated on. Um, I didn't have my dad wrote a letter um to say that he is writing me out of his life because he feels that I chose my mum over him in the divorce but he was actively cheating in our family home with a woman that I found Um, and I was 16 at the time so for me, I couldn't respect this man. Mm. And I remember I came to England. Um, I left. I was in Guyana for a while. 
And I left England and I left him there and I didn't tell him that I was leaving. We lived in the same house. Mm. And my dad was really malicious. At one point, my dad had another family and my mum would go shopping and put food in the fridge. And I remember one day, my dad said to me, oh, would you, I was at 15. He said, what do you want to eat for breakfast? And I said, oh, bread and cheese. Mm. And he said, oh, 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 there's no bread. There's no cheese. I said, but mum's gone shopping. And he said, oh, the dog jumped up on the table and he ate the cheese. Is it? But he didn't know I was looking at him. And my dad used to take things from our family fridge into a bag to take to his other family. What? Yeah. That was my dad. And that's for me how he loved me. Because, you know, you're taken from me to another family. But do you even call that love? That's it. I don't know what that is. And so when I, when my dad passed, I hadn't spoken to him for 10 years. Wow. Because, as I said, he said that I was, I, I was dead to him because I chose my mum over him despite my parents got divorced after 30 years of marriage on my 16th birthday the courthouse was right next to my school and I was writing my GCSE maths at the same time hence why I got a D because I couldn't focus hmm. and I could see my mum in the courthouse because wow. you know in the Caribbean it's got like wooden oh, and through. I could see her and I remember that feeling and I remember having to choose better so and I do think my dad's influence if he was as significant of yours, would have been different in terms of my relationships and my grief. Because I got a call from Guyana to say, so my dad got remarried. Um, as I said, he was blind. But he still managed to find a woman. And I remember saying to him, you don't even know what this woman looks like. And he said, yeah, but I know what she feels like. All right. I said, okay, oh, <clears> dad. <throat> right. <laughs> um, so he's married this woman now. And this woman's got his legacy, his money, his whatever. And... She called, no, her son called and she went, oh, hi, is this Camilla? It was the middle of the night and she said, he said, um, your dad's died. I said, oh, I didn't know how to feel. Mm. And I wonder if other people who don't have relationships with their parents, when they hear that, feel the same. Because I didn't have, when I got a call about my mum, I burst out mm. into tears. I didn't know how to feel. And managing grief when you your relationship is yeah. skewed is a really different scope. It's it's really different. And so losing my dad, I don't relate to you mm. in that. And I guess that's the whole message about grief. It's different for everybody. Yeah. And, diff and I didn't go to Guyana for my dad's funeral. Mm. I didn't want to go. I didn't feel that he was worth the plane fare. And I don't know how dare I in, in retrospect. Maybe I should have. But I thought, why am I going? Why am I going to say goodbye to someone I didn't even want to say hello? Do you have any regrets about... Yeah. What, the departure or the relationship? The relationship. But what do you think you could have done differently? Being more... Empathetic. I think my dad was uh, hurt by my mum. I And I look back on their relationship and I don't know if she loved him how... He wanted to be loved. My mum was quite a hard woman, you know. And he he quite... chose her. Yeah, I know. And it's really difficult, you yeah. know. This is a whole other relationship discussion. <laughs> but then when mum died, that was different too because when someone's got dementia mm. and they stop talking and the first person that my mum forgot was me and I was the last person to care for her. It's hard. And I felt sad mm. I felt how could you forget me first she would see my ex-husband she would see my daughter she would remember their names but she would call me mummy oh. um, and her mum and her had a really tumultuous relationship so at first she was a bit afraid of me because I think her mum used to hit her mm. on that and I thought I'm Cam like I've been here for you from like I'm your, your wash belly last pick me like how I'm Cam. Yeah. I've always, like, I've always, I rode for you. I lost my dad for you. How long did your sister go to the States? When I was 10. See. I, I was her. I was her handbag. My mum had depression from a young age mm. and I was there looking after her from a young age. My mum had postnatal depression. She didn't want me at birth. At when, you know, she didn't check to see whether I was a, a, a living baby for six months nearly. 
five, six months because she didn't want another baby yet. She was 42. So when she, you know, I was always her carer. So I felt, you know, quite, how can you forget me? So then when she died, I had so, I had a lot of feelings. Like, you've left me now. You've left me with not much. You've left me with no dad. You left me. So whereas I love hearing that you have this wonderful memory, I want that. I really want it. I want like what Keish has. I want that. The songs. I don't have... I remember my mum being sad all of the time. My mum was sad for my whole life. And I want... I want to replace that. I want to have that memory. I want to have the joy. And I think not having the joy that you have hurts me. So I want you to feel strengthened in your joy. That those are, for me, remarkable lessons that you've learned from dad. Um, And I think your dad is looking down on you. And seeing how amazing I see you as. Because you know I think you're amazing. And as a poor single, I'm just letting you know. Um, you can slide in my DM for her details. Um, <laughs> so she's from good stock, as we've heard. So I just want, you know, I want you to, I want you I to find that. You. I just want you to find that, you know. Um, so we're going to bring Keish back and we're going to wrap up our grief chat because it's deep and hard. And we're going to end with, with some good stuff.